Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre. So today we had decided talking on a different topic and the topic is how do we use clomiphene in IVF and how do we use clomiphene in a slightly extended form and I'm going to talk to you with a very short observational study. Now the, the answer here is 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 clomiphene effective in suppressing LH surge and that is something which is extremely important uh, and let's go back to clomiphene now what does clomiphene do it commonly works at the hypothalamic pituitary level so it does two main things it starts the process of the negative feedback and the positive feedback both interrupting it because it literally occupies the estrogen receptor sites. So what happens is, as the estrogen levels start increasing, the FSS does not decline. So that's one of the reasons why you get multifollicular growth. And as long as you continue clomiphene, the positive feedback mechanism, which occurs with rising E2 levels and a flare of LH, that too does not occur. So in, in effect, you can utilize clomid slightly differently. So let's have a look at uh, the uh, study. So if you, so this was published in 2006 and it was in fertility sterility and it's uh, a clinic in Japan. And what you remember is that a Japanese are extremely far ahead of a lot of the world in natural and modified natural IVF. So this was a minimal stimulation protocol using clomiphene to suppress LH surge. So 534 uh, 43 cycles, a young age group of 25 to 29 with regular cycles from day three, they had clomiphene 50 milligram daily and this was continued till the day of trigger. And then that 75 of HMG given on alternate days. Controls were completely natural cycle and, and these were 201. And what was tested was the efficacy of uh, LH lowering efficacy using clomiphene. So if you have a look at the clomiphene cycles and the clomiphene cycles had oocytes of 1.83, a fertilization of 72.3%, a mean embryos of 1.21 and per retrieval a, a pregnancy rate of 17.4% and per embryo transfer a pregnancy rate of 26%. Now we come to the answer is how effective was clomiphene in suppressing LH surge and LH more than 15 which we would classify as LH not being suppressed was about 5% of cases and now when you compare when you compare ovulation before a collection and, and that is very important if you continued clomiphene in this study till the day of trigger, and the trigger was bisarylin trigger which was given, then you had an ovulation rate, a premature ovulation rate of 2.8%. But if you did not do it, and if you went for a completely natural cycle, then you're looking at an ovulation rate of almost 18.9%. So what was the conclusion of this study? And the conclusion of the study is, you know, it, it is a relatively sh short study, and what it is, it's, it's telling us two important things. It's telling us that clomiphene, something which we are slowly abandoning in ovulation induction, replacing it with letrozole, we, we can utilize its actions to one, is to create a multifollicular growth and also to suppress the alleged surge which may occur. And, and so uh, you can end up using this as an antagonist in cases. And in fact, they, we have used it in few cases where to lower the cost, you can give clomiphene right through. And I tend to use a dose of around about 100 and right through along with FSH. And this often works out in poor responders uh, where we tend to use clomiphene. And, but it's, that's a different discussion altogether of how, when do you use clomiphene and, and at what stage do you use clomiphene. So that is in short of utilizing clomiphene for suppressing LH surge and something which you should try at times in especially patients who 
can't afford any tr a huge co cost rise in our poor responders and something worth looking at. So thank you very much and do share this talk uh, and it does and hopefully it will help you to um, make minor changes in your practice. Thank you.